This is your USMNT Abroad Weekend Update from November 8th to November 10th of 2024. Hello, hello. If you are new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tactical Manager TV and welcome to the US Men's National Team Abroad series where every single Monday we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the weekend. Now listen, pay attention. I have good news and I have bad news, okay? So let's get the bad news out of the way. The bad news is next Monday we don't have the US Men's National Team Abroad episode because it's international break. The US Men's National Team will be playing so there are no club games. But we're also not gonna have it for two more Mondays, which means it'll only be back December 9th. The reason we won't have it for those two Mondays, those two extra Mondays, it's pretty simple and that's the good news. The good news is that I will be traveling. And you may be wondering, how's that good news? Well, I, I never said the good news was for you. The good news is for me. The bad news is for you. But don't worry, I guess I have good news for you. During this time, we're gonna be covering camp normally. We also go we're also gonna have player interviews and many other episodes that will be released during those weeks. So the coverage will continue. It's just the US Men's National Team Abroad series. We're gonna take a little bit of a break because after all, we're human. And we have to do human stuff like, like rest and travel and like eat, poop, you know, things like that. With that said, everyone, don't forget to drop a like in this video right now. Help us hit 1,000 likes. And as always, drop a comment in the comment section down below to rig the YouTube algorithm. I guess today what you can do is tell us what state you are from in the United States of America or if you live abroad. All right, let's roll the intro and start the episode. As always, we start with the top five leagues in Europe, the very first being the English Premier League. So let's go to England and talk about Chris Richards from Crystal Palace, Matt Turner from Crystal Palace, and Anthony Robinson from Fulham, because Crystal Palace and Fulham clashed over the weekend. And on Saturday, Chris Richards was back from injury and he started off the bench alongside Matt Turner for Crystal Palace during their 2-0 loss to Fulham and they both stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes. Now, Anthony Robinson started for Fulham and played the full 90 minutes for them once again during this 2-0 victory. Next on the list is Tyler Adams from Bournemouth. And on Saturday, Tyler Adams started and played 67 minutes for Bournemouth during their 3-2 loss to Brentford. This was his first start of the season for Bournemouth and this is actually his second start ever since he joined Bournemouth in the summer of 2023. All of that due to injuries. That's how crazy this Tyler Adams injury crisis has been, right? He got injured, I believe in the 2022-2023 season with um, Leeds United around March, and he's been injured since. Of course, there were moments where he came back and played like two or three games, and then he got injured again. But it looks like he's finally healthy, fingers crossed. But for this game, I actually thought Tyler Adams played well, mostly in the first half, right? He was much better in the first half. He moved the ball well in possession, played it safe, and was very good defensively. Some tried to blame him for the first goal they conceded, but I mean, he was marking a guy that is quite taller than him, that he lost the header, and one can make a case that he might have been fouled. I, I, he was kind of held down. It looked like a foul to me. Overall, it was a positive performance from Tyler Adams. Now it's time to leave England and go to Italy so we can talk about the Americans in the Serie A. The first two being Christian Pulisic and Yunus Musa from Milan. And on Saturday, Christian Pulisic started and played 80 minutes for Milan during their 3-3 draw with Cagliari. This is the same Milan that defeated Real Madrid at the Bernabeu during the midweek in the Champions League. Yes, and I said this in the midweek episode. This Milan struggled with Monza last weekend. They tied Cagliari this weekend, right? Two teams that are relegation battle teams in Italy, but they defeated Real Madrid at the Bernabeu 3-1 during the midweek. What this kind of tells me is either Milan is super inconsistent, which they kind of are, but it's also a lot easier to play against an opponent when you're not the one that has the pressure and the responsibility to win it. You don't have to take the initiative, right? You don't have to be ball dominant. You don't have to be the one to win the game. And that that's one of the reasons. But I also think Milan is very inconsistent and their defense is ass. But back to this game, Yunus Musa was subbed in the 80th minute as a right back, right wing back. And I don't have much to say about his performance. He did nothing wrong, but he also didn't stand out. So I don't have much to say there. As for Christian Pulisic, his performance was meh. 
yeah, you know what I mean when I say meh. It wasn't really a stinker. You can't say Pulisic was terrible. He wasn't terrible, but he really wasn't good either. He was just meh. And I'm just gonna say it, it wasn't a good first half from Pulisic. Part of it was because of his position and role. He wasn't really involved that much and he wasn't great. He was kind of playing as a central midfielder at times. He was super deep and ineffective. Now, later in the game, he did move to the right wing, which he had a nice moment where he created space on his own to get a nice shot on target. And it was off the rebound of that shot that Milan scored their third goal. And that's not a goal contribution, but it kind of is a goal involvement, I would say. But outside of that, Pulisic was pretty anonymous throughout the game. And you know what? Pulisic is actually starting to enter a bit of a go drought for Milan. He hasn't scored for Milan over the past four games. But hey, now he has two games against Jamaica with the US men's national team. And as long as he lights up Jamaica in a non-xenophobic way and we defeat them, I don't care that much. I want him to do well for Milan, but I prefer that our players play better for the national team. So hopefully Pulisic ends this go drought against the Jamaicans. Next on the list, we have the Americans that play for Juventus and they are Weston McKinney and Tim Weah. And on Saturday, Weah started and played the full 90 minutes for Juve as a winger and even as a striker late in the game during their 2-0 win over Torino. As for Weston McKinney, he started off the bench and was subbed in the 86th minute or so. So I don't have much to say about Weston McKinney besides the fact that he will be very well rested for the US men's national team this camp. Now Weah, he actually scored for Juventus once again. It was a tap in, but he still scored. He was in the right place and right time. And he now has four goals and two assists in the Serie A this season with eight games played. The best professional season Tim Weah ever had was with Leo back in the 2021-2022 season where he had three goals and five assists throughout the entire season. And he mostly played that year as a winger. If he stays healthy, he can easily double that this season, probably even more. So as soon as Weah started playing as a winger once again for his club, he started to get goal contributions once again. Oh, and I'm totally shocked. Actually, not really. I mean, I've been saying this for quite some time. Many have been critical of Weah and the lack of goal contributions for his clubs, but he has been mainly playing the past, what, two or three seasons as a fullback or a wingback. Now, as soon as Thiago Mota put him as a striker or winger, he has been getting goals and assists once again. So Weah is not a bad player. He was just being played as a defender. So his goal contributions went down. And now they're going back up. Next up is Gianluca Busio from Venezia. And on Saturday, Busio was back in the starting 11 for Venezia and he played the full 90 minutes for them during their 2-1 loss to Parma. I watched moments of this game on Saturday morning and I thought Busio was actually playing very well against Parma on both ends. I, I truly do. So uh, what happened was I was watching this game and Busio was playing well, but I was also drinking my morning coffee on Saturday while I was watching the game. And then, you know, one thing led to another when you're drinking coffee and eventually I had to run to the toilet. You know, that happens to everyone. You drink coffee, you run to the toilet. It was an emergency. I survived. I lost some weight, obviously, but everything's all right. And then I missed the game. Then I missed the rest of the game. That's literally what happened. But everyone, before we continue, we're going to put a quick word from the sponsor of this video, So Rare. If you want to play, the link will be in the description with a special offer. We'll be back in 60 to 90 seconds. Do you collect sports cards? Do you play fantasy sports? Yes, no, maybe. If you said yes to any of that, I got something for you. And if you said no, you might still want to stick around. Tactical Manager TV is partnering up with SoRare with a special offer. The link will be in the description. In SoRare, you can collect your own virtual cards of your favorite players. And then you may be asking, why would I want to collect virtual cards? Well, you can line them up on five aside games every single week. And if your players perform in real life, you can win actual money, signed jerseys, game tickets, or even more cards to improve your own club. And you can also get unique experiences like a friend of the channel, Fiago, that got to meet Zinedine Zidane. You know what's also cool? They also have the NBA and Major League Baseball. I'm mainly gonna just stick to soccer, but you do you. What I really like about SoRare before we even partnered with them is that they're unlike other fantasy games where you have to pay per play. In SoRare, you pay to get the players you want permanently as cards. And then you can play multiple times using those same cards, at least until the player retires, win rewards if your players perform in real life. You can also buy undervalued player cards for cheap, then hold, use them in the future when they improve or develop. And then you can even sell that card when its value goes up for better ones. 
or just keep the money yourself. If you sign up with the link in the description of this video, you will get $50 in credit to buy your first cards. Again, the link will be in the description. Use that link to make sure you get the special offer. Play with responsibility. All right, enjoy. Next up are the Americans that play in Germany in the Bundesliga. So we were going to cover Nathaniel Brown, right? The left back that plays for Eintracht Frankfurt, the German American every single weekend. But I was sent information from CONCACAF Edgar on Twitter, a very reliable source, and he's really good at covering CONCACAF players. And Edgar told me he believes that Nathaniel Brown is actually cap tied to Germany due to some FIFA eligibility rules. So until we can clear things up and find out if Nathaniel Brown is actually eligible to play for the US men's national team or not, we're not gonna really be covering him. So we're gonna skip on Nathaniel Brown, the left back from Eintracht Frankfurt, and we're gonna start with the Dortmund boys, Gio Reyna and Cole Campbell. Now Gio Reyna is still injured. He's apparently back in training, but he's training separate from the group. So I wouldn't expect him to be back till I guess the earliest December, but why don't we talk about Cole Campbell? And on Saturday, Cole Campbell started off the bench and was subbed in the 74th minute for Dortmund during their 3-1 loss to Mainz. He was sent in when they were already down 3-1 and playing man down as well. Regardless, this is the fifth consecutive game that the 18-year-old American winger gets minutes for Dortmund. He was called in for the US Men's National Team U20s, but at this rate, I could see him getting a senior team call up by the summer of 2025. Next on the list, we have Joe Scali from Borussia, not Dortmund. And on Saturday, Joe Scali started and played the full 90 minutes for Gladbach, helping them hold a clean sheet during their 0-0 draw with RB Leipzig. Next up would have been Kevin Paredes and Leonard Maloney from Heidenheim and Kevin Paredes from Wolfsburg, but they are both injured and they were not available for their clubs this weekend. So we're gonna leave Germany and go to Spain so we can talk about the Americans that play in La Liga. In Celta Vigo, where Luca de la Torre plays, and Real Betis, where Johnny plays, they clashed over the weekend. Luca de la Torre was still not available. Apparently he's back in training with the team, so he could be back soon. I don't really expect him to play for them. I expect him to leave in January, but again, he was actually injured. It wasn't a conspiracy theory, but Johnny actually played. So let's talk about Johnny. And on Sunday, Johnny Cardoso started and played 56 minutes for Real Betis during their 2-2 draw with Celta Vigo in La Liga. Johnny got an assist for Real Betis. He made a nice run into the box through the left side and found Vitor Hockey with a pass, or I guess, you can kind of call it a low cross or a diagonal pass, whatever you want to call it. It was a nice assist and he helped Real Betis get this 2-2 draw. Now this camp, this US Men's National Team camp that's coming up is crucial for Johnny, right? Tyler Adams won't be available. It's his very first camp with Pochettino. Most of the good players are there, right? He's gonna have McKinney, he's gonna have Tillman, he's gonna have Pulisic, he's gonna have Weya. All those guys will be there. Johnny has to perform. I still think that maybe him and Tyler can even start in the double pivot, but regardless, if Johnny wants to be a starter for the US men's national team, he has to start putting in these performances that he has for Betis with the national team. And if he doesn't do it against Jamaica, it starts to become very complicated because he has gotten a few chances and not delivered so far. So these two games against Jamaica will be crucial for Johnny. And I expect him to actually start both games or at least one. Now let's go to France and talk about the Americans that play in Ligue 1. The first one being Caleb Wiley that plays for Strasbourg. And on Saturday, Caleb Wiley started off the bench and was subbed in the 84th minute for Strasbourg during their 3-1 loss to Monaco. So I'm talking about Monaco, and you may be wondering, where's Balogun? Balogun is still not available due to a shoulder injury. He's expected to return this year, so maybe late November or sometime in December. We just don't know when yet. But the good thing here is that it's a shoulder injury. So once the shoulder is fine, he should be fully fit because I mean, he's probably running, probably moving around, probably, I don't know, doing whatever you have to do to stay in shape as a soccer player. Next up, we have Mark McKenzie, from Toulouse. And on Sunday, McKenzie started and played the full 90 minutes for Toulouse during their 2-0 win over Rennes. So this is actually the third consecutive game where McKenzie helps Toulouse hold a clean sheet. They're also currently the fourth best team when it comes to conceding less goals in Ligue 1. Only PSG, Monaco and Lens conceded less goals than Toulouse. What does that mean? It means McKenzie is a starting center back for one of the best defenses in France this season. And that's no easy accomplishment. Next up in France, we still have Tenor Tessman from Lyon. And on Sunday, Tessman started off the bench and was subbed in the 65th minute for Lyon during their 1-0 win over Saint-Étienne. Okay, 
Time to leave France and go to the Netherlands and talk about the Americans that play in the Eredivisie. As always, we start with the PSV boys, Malik Tillman, Ricardo Pepe, and Richie Ledesma. Again, Dest is still recovering from the ACL injury. He's expected to be back in January or February. But on Saturday, Pepe and Tillman both started for PSV during their 3-0 win over Breda in the Eredivisie. Richie Ledesma started off the bench and was subbed in the 83rd minute. Okay, so Tillman didn't actually get any goal contributions this game, but he actually played quite well. He created a few chances, won most of his duels, and helped on defense quite a bit. And then he was subbed out around the 83rd minute. But once again, it was a very good performance from Malik Tillman. As for Pepe, he was subbed out around minute 71, roughly, and he pretty much did nothing. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Pepe was great. He was tremendous for PSV this weekend. First and foremost, Luke de Jong was healthy and even played late in the game, which means the coach actually chose Pepe over him for this occasion, and Ricardo Pepe delivered. Pepe scored a goal, which was actually a great finish off a low cross. He always does super well in finishing those low crosses. We've seen that with the US Men's National Team. On top of that, he got a wonderful assist. It was a beautiful back heel assist, for PSV's second goal. He now has six goals and one assist in only 420 minutes played in the Eredivisie this season. That's a goal contribution every 60 minutes. If PSV is smart, which I hope they are, they'll continue to ramp up Pepe's minutes, which will help him develop and keep Luke de Jong fresh for when it matters. Because just to make it clear, right now, I still think Luke de Jong is a better player than Pepe. Over time, that can change. So the best thing PSV can do is give Pepe a lot of minutes so he can continue to develop and keep Luke de Jong fresh for Champions League games or crucial Eredivisie matches. What is good here is that they are giving Pepe more minutes this season when compared to the previous one. And obviously, he's delivering. Still in the Netherlands, we have Taylor Booth and Paxton Aronson from Utrecht. And on Friday, Paxton started and played the full 90 minutes for Utrecht during their 1-0 win over Heracles. As for Taylor Booth, he started off the bench and was sent in the 88th minute. Okay, so Paxton actually scored their game-winning goal around the 67th minute. A goal that proved to us that he can't head the ball. His headers are terrible, but he figures it out with his feet. What I'm saying here is that his head game ain't good. I mean, he jumped like Air Jordan and followed with a bizarre header that hit the defender. However, it landed back on his feet and he scored. He took care of business. A goal is a goal and we'll take it. I also want to say that Paxson has been tremendous lately for Utrecht. I bought his card on SoRare for $4 and you know what? It's been paying me dividends. He's been great for them for at least the past seven games. Yeah, you can find some cheap bargains on SoRare if you know the players well enough. As soon as I saw Paxson Aronson's card for four bucks, I got it and it was well worth the money for sure. He's been great for them and probably the card's even worth more now. And if you wanna play SoRare, the link is in the description of this video and you get $50 in credit once you join using our link. If you give a crap, okay, the link is there. Now we're gonna go back to England so we can talk about the Americans that play in the EFL Championship, the second division of England. The first one would have been Josh Sargent from Norwich, but he had groin surgery. Uh, there was some issue with his groin, he had to have surgery, and he's now out for eight weeks. So he'll be back in 2025. So let's skip Josh Sargent and talk about Brendan Aronson from Leeds. And on Saturday, Brendan Aronson started and played the full 90 minutes for Leeds during their 2-0 win over QPR. I know it's still early in the season, but it's looking more and more likely that Leeds will get promoted, or to the very least, fight for promotion. Personally, I think Leeds will get promoted to the Premier League, and that's where things will get interesting. Are they gonna keep Brendan Aronson? Will he still be a starter for Leeds once they head to the Prem? We'll see. There's still a lot to happen and Leeds could not get promoted, but I think they will. Next up is Haji Wright from Coventry. And on Saturday, Haji Wright started and played 89 minutes for Coventry during their 2-2 draw with Sunderland. The good news here is that Haji Wright scored once again. It was a nice goal. It was a strong right-footed finish. The bad news here is that he rolled his ankle very badly at the end of the game. It looked nasty, which is why he was left out of the US Men's National Team roster, which is unfortunate because now it seems like Alejandro Zendejas and Kate Cowell will be the backup wingers of Weya and Pulisic, which is quite a drop off. Yeah, I mean, Haji to Weya and Pulisic, it's already a big downgrade. Alejandro Zendejas and Kate Cowell, it's a bigger downgrade right there. But it is what it is. 
we're gonna wish Haji Wright a speedy recovery. Hopefully it's not too serious. Last but not least in England, we have Aiden Morris from Middlesbrough. And on Saturday, Morris started and played 70 minutes for Middlesbrough during their 5-1 victory over Luton Town. Still in the island of the United Kingdom, we're gonna go up north to Scotland and talk about the two Americans that play for Celtic, Austin Trusty and Cameron Carter Vickers. And on Saturday, Trusty started and played the full 90 minutes for Celtic during their 2-0 win over Kilmarnock. Now, Carter Vickers, was not available due to injury. And I couldn't really find any reports of what's the injury, but I'm just going to assume, you know what I'm about to say, it's a toe injury. It's always a toe injury with Carter Vickers, and he's not gonna be with the US Men's National Team because of this injury. So it's safe to say that he probably banged his toe against the bed once again, and Carter Vickers is injured again. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like before you go. And don't forget, we're going to have a little bit of a break with the U.S. Men's National Team Abroad Series all the way till December 9th. But during this time period, the channel will be business as usual. We're going to cover the U.S. Men's National Team camp. We're going to have multiple videos coming out after camp. Nothing will stop. Just a little break from the U.S. Men's National Team Abroad Series because I won't be able to watch all the games and we won't be able to make these videos as we always do on Monday, December 9th. It will be back. Thank you very much, So Rare, for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.